Happy 2016, everybody. This is Vandal the Love Handle Drummond and Frito Esparza. Frito and the Freak have returned, finally. After uh, about uh, over a month, at least, yes, right? Yes, it's been quite a while. We were... The last podcast we did, you promised we were going to do it every two weeks, and then you ended up disappearing. I should I should know better than to make that promise yeah. when the holidays are upon us. That is the worst time for yeah. me to try to plan. I was so excited about doing a podcast like three weeks ago, and you just disappeared. I on was it. so excited. <laughs> and I just you were hide you it. were so excited about Christmas. You were waiting. You yep. were preparing. Kurt Kurt prepares for Christmas more than anybody else. It's a two week, right. two week I, process. I grow a big beard like Santa Claus. You, you didn't even go to a Posada this year. No, I didn't. I missed that. Were I you missed... invited or there was nothing this? I don't think there was one. Yeah. Either that or I wasn't invited. Yeah. Well, that would make it <laughs> even <laughs> worse. We were not invited. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, you weren't invited, and then you invite me because you need a Mexican to explain all that. <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> well, that's what happened the last time. I remember, like all the guys who did, they're like, "What's going on? Why are we singing? <laughs> Why is half the half the people at this at this get together singing outside, and the rest of us are inside?" Yes, exactly. And you know, well, all I know is I had enough beer in me to yeah. throw off my shirt. And 2015 did not. We did not see Kurt Brown dancing. We did not. Which was we a good year. <laughs> I felt much better about my uh, Posada dance than I did my taco shop dance. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you actually improved. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I said, I uh, threw my shirt off and, you know, I felt a little more free. It's, my inner hippie was being channeled, so, you know. Yeah, we ended the year pretty, like, with a pretty sad note. Extremely I sad. Yeah. Losing a legend. Lismark. Lismark, yes. Not e- Liz Mark Sr., not to be confused with Liz Ijo Mark Sr. Yes. Not Ijo de Liz Mark. Not Ijo de Liz Mark. <clears throat> He's still alive and kicking. Because, <laughs> you know, what people, I'm pretty sure there's a few people, fans out there who don't really know that there's a Liz, you know, they know there's a Liz Mark, there's a Liz Mark Jr. Yes. But you see Liz Mark, they're like, oh, just, they put both of them together. Oh, I, you know, the very first time I made one of a number of trips with, uh, with uh, Fizzy, Pat Howard and Steve Gerber, to Tijuana, uh, the very first sh- uh, show we saw there, the co-main event, it was Conan, first time I saw Conan, uh, Asai, Ultimo Dragon, you know, uh, very first time I saw him. Oh, really? And Lizmark was the third man, and they wrestled uh, Negro Casas, Indio Yori, and As Charo. And... Uh, in fact, I, I believe pretty that good or forgettable. It was great. Great. It was great. I mean, Oscharo was past his prime. Yeah, yeah. Indio Yori was a really good uh, local guru, though. Uh, and if I remember right, that match was to set up a hair versus mask with Oscharo and Conan. And uh, but that was uh, the first time I ever saw Liz Mark live. Saw him live several other times after that. If I, you know, I can't remember one exact match that I enjoyed of Liz Mark, but what I really dug about him... In fact, I, I remember a few years ago I was over here and you were showing a uh, title. Yeah, because you brought, you brought... I think that was the tape you brought, right? Yes, yes. The, it, was it, was bit, like, it was like a, a, just a, like maybe half of a match between him and Faraon, right? That's it. Because I, I had actually started watching it because I was converting it to DVD. And when I watched it, I told you how, how good it was. And you came over and then you watched that and... It, we were just amazed at how good that match was. Although, you know, you don't, you probably just didn't remember watching it after years of having that tape. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. You know me. <laughs> well, what? Because what... I'm thinking you've had that tape for so many years and you you, you barely remember watching that. that. And watching that one match was it struck me what I just loved about Lismark, and that was that he was such an awesome flyer. Yet there was something really rough and raw about his flying. Yeah. It wasn't this perfectly precisioned. But it still looked graceful, though. Like it was, he, it was yeah. graceful. At the same time, it looked badass. Yeah, if that makes sense. Because I think just for his body, his his physique, yes. made the move. Like like people were comparing him to Ricky Steamboat. Yes, and I think that's kind of like similar. When when Ricky Steamboat might have not been the best high flyer of his time or whatever, but when he would do a a, a, a splash off the top rope, it would look amazing. Exactly. You know, or, or you know the 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 cross body block, it would always look amazing. And that's what Lismark kind of looked like too. Exactly. He looked. He looked rough. He looked raw, and uh, 
it, and by sure coincidence, right after hearing about his passing, I was just kind of uh, surfing YouTube for some old Japanese matches, and I happened upon uh, a match of his in uh, All Japan in 79. Yeah, yeah. And it was, was a guy called Mak Hayato. It was... It was there was, was a wrestler or the yeah it was a young, a young... <laughs> I'm thinking the uh, the YouTube uploader <laughs> I'm like well that's, uh, you know, that's probably who he's naming the... himself after yeah it was a Japanese young mass wrestler who you could oh my, my um yeah yeah I know who you're talking about yeah it's yeah. like that yeah, no, it's I... like they wanted him to be the resident flyer yeah and as I was watching the match I'm not even going to attempt to name say his name <laughs> I tried I did yeah. my best yeah that's my first faux pas of 2016 yeah uh, and as I was as I was watching, I just thought, you know, Lismark really gave that guy a lot of spots. Lismark carried the match, and probably the only fault I could give him on that was he, how would I say, somebody that green he let him do too much, which actually says a lot for him. Yeah, and it also says. He wanted more trips to Japan, <laughs> probably. Yeah, making yeah. making the Japanese guy look a lot better than he probably was at that time. Yeah, although the guy was pretty. I mean, they weren't pushing him like a tiger mask. Yeah, but still, you have to make yeah. the guy. Doesn't matter how good or you always have to make him look yeah, a lot better than absolutely. he really was. So, but I, I, but from what I hear, he was a real pro. I mean, yeah. he was somebody who really nice guy too. From from what everybody has was saying about that's him. what I've been reading. Yeah, and it just yeah, it's a bummer when you hear about one of the nice ones going. Yeah, it. it I mean, it, it was surprising because I, I think he had just made a couple appearances the last couple of months, mm-hmm. you know, talking about, you know, his career and stuff like that. And then this happening so like dirt, near the holidays. You know, there's always somebody. Oh, there's always somebody who passes away during the holidays. But I mean, and especially, it wasn't just Lismark. There were so many other guy, people who passed away during that that period of time. There were like a oh, lot totally. of just a lot a few of celebrities. Days ago, uh, the original Buddy Wayne, too. Yeah. Dave Henderson played baseball. Oh, yeah. you don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. <laughs> 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 Metal Ark Lemon. Yes, just, that one I do. Yeah, know. yeah. I'm old enough to remember the. There are like a lot of people, and and, and so it's it just kind of like there's always like this like cloud. Oh, during totally. that the holidays where well, you're like man this I... year in particular I just on a personal level I know several people at work who lost a relative right, really? around, Jeez. right around the holidays and I just thought oh man yeah, it's gotta be like it's and you know it's, it, it, I thought it was kind of it was nice that Liz Mark Jr. mentioned how how everybody remembering his dad helped him out during this time this difficult time because yes. everybody was just like I, I don't I, I don't think I ever saw so many people like like just talk about how great a guy he was I mean, usually somebody passes away, you get a couple of people who are like, yeah, oh, I, one of my favorite wrestlers and stuff like that. But with Liz Mark, it was always like very positive about not just him as a, as a wrestler, but him helping people out, mm-hmm. taking the time to help them out. I mean, they had, um, they had interviews with a variety of guys like Negro Casas mm-hmm. who couldn't even finish his interview because oh, of wow. the memories he had of him. Um, and that's the kind of... Felino, the same thing. Just, 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 a, just a, I mean, really sad. Like, and that's the legacy you want to leave. Yeah. I mean... You can have all these, you know, have all these honors and stuff that look good on paper, but it really says something when people remember you, remember you in a sincerely heartfelt way and remember, well, like, it, like you know, was said, you know, he often would put the programs and the promotion ahead of his own. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it it was interesting, like reading just some of the stories about him, like his career, because mm-hmm. like like I think most people might rem- remember him mostly from the the '90s. Mm-hmm. By the time by that point, he was already a lot older. Although he was still really like yeah, he still, was still still really very good, really very strong. good and still pushed. But I mean, a lot of people don't remember him from the '80s, the early se- the the late '70s when he was really good, mm-hmm. and. And I, I think when you're reading up about this guy, and you're like, man, this guy really did a lot. Like, you just start looking up all the all the accomplishments he had, like being such a top star in, in Acapulco, and then coming to to Mexico City and becoming a star there. Yes, I mean, just some of the great, some of the stories he had, like the story he had about um, what was the, I can't remember who. There were like some just some some like the story about him when he first got into a, a in Mexico, when the guys were uh, oh when his, they stole his stole, shoes kept kept, kept st- stealing his shoes and he had to wear sandals on his way, and you know I was laughing because I saw Dave Meltzer's little bit on it, and the first thing I thought because he got it off me, mm-hmm. yes, and I'm like, 
Dave had to add more to it. I'm like, dude, Dave, he didn't say more to this. He got the sandals. Most pl- where you shower, there's usually sandals. Mm-hmm. That's probably where he got them from the arena. He didn't go right. and buy sandals to like wear as a oh, backup. Exactly. And I was yeah, like, yeah. and I just started laughing when I was like, because you know, like, like when you when somebody like I don't mind people like getting stuff off of my stuff, but it's like when you overdo it, like <laughs> don't, don't do that. Can I please like, yes. put your own spin on? Because I, I I knew like Chris Downer was gonna write something, mm-hmm. and I. I'm sure Dave and Dr. Lucha were going to write something. Mm-hmm. Although I don't know if Dr. Lucha wrote something about him. So I just wanted to do something different. So I looked through interviews. That's the one benefit I have is like I could actually understand Spanish. So I could find new stuff to talk about. Yeah. So he had that story. And there was like a couple of other stories that I thought were very interesting about. Like him, like just just some of his career matches and stuff. Like his career, like mm-hmm. his, his feuds, like with um, Satanico. Mm-hmm. Like finding quotes about how, what he thought of Satanico and guys like that. I mean... He had like he had like I mean the LA, the feud with La Parca, yes. probably something that most people probably remember more than than I mean you have all these other great feuds but then you're like oh he had this great feud with La Parca and then he had the t- teaming up with Atlantis mm-hmm. when he made his way back to CML later in his career so yeah he he had a he had a pretty good um, career and then like the the heart attack or the whatever he suffered although they he won't admit that it was a heart attack really they they never mentioned that They're probably. He, didn't he want to scare away yeah when he, when he when he talked about like retiring he always said that it was just from the injury you know the the normal bumps and bruises mm. from from wrestling that you get a mass from wrestling but he never said it was anything else wow. related to that wow, but I, i'm i'm sure there's more to it than that than just that and you know we had so many people die from heart problems like even that that was the other thing like oh what was that um Natalie Cole Natalie yes. Cole passed away too. Like, she had been in bad health for yeah. some time. Um, well, congestive heart failure really tells you it was really well, bad. Well, yeah, well, you know, she had a liver. Massive congestive heart yeah, failure. Yeah, well, you, you, I don't know if you know, she had a liver transplant. Really? Uh, wow. A few years before. And uh, it was really sad because she's somebody who, you know, battled drug addiction. It sounds like she actually won it and was really clean for years. Yeah. And it's kind of sad when somebody gets it together and. You know, I I, th- I think the liver transplant was because of hepatitis, if I remember. Yeah. Right. But yeah, that was a bummer. You know, ju- wrestling and just general celebrity icons. 2015, we lost a lot. Yeah, it's like well, getting to the top stories of 2015. I mean, Paraguay Jr. That was like such a. I think that 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 was different though. That was like a, just an, a tragedy that happened. Yeah, that was a freak tragedy yeah. where li- list markets. It's sad. I mean, he was a 64? 64 at the time. Then he, um, he was, it was funny because we were trying to discuss, uh-huh. we were debating his age. And a lot of people, like a lot of the guys who wrote about it early on, mm-hmm. they went with the age that's listed on the wiki pages. Well, uh, if you go on Liz Mark's Facebook page, mm-hmm. he had it as December 18th, whereas everybody else had um, September 18th, 19th. Oh. Oh, some like two year difference like I think it was they were saying it was 66 mm-hmm. but we found we I looked it up on Facebook and I found that people were wishing were, were like disappointed They're like oh and it's gonna be his birthday and on Friday how sad is that and I was like I'm like Friday so his birthday was December 18th ah, gotcha, so he was 64 gotcha. going to be 65 ah. so everybody was off by a, by a couple of years but like I was telling um, Chris Zellner I, I go with Mexico you never know there's people that like my grandmother um she celebrates her birthday in December, but mm-hmm. there was, I guess, like a couple, like a, like a filing issue, where her birthday was um, some other month. Also, she found out like years later right. that, that. So there's like, and, and but she's like, she's about that age, but, but it's like there's like it might be off a couple of months. So, I so. asked Superboy for info on his father. I just kind of wanted to general stats. Yeah. Just uh, when was he born and. Superboy just kind of shrugged. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's some, somewhere. Yeah. Be, I think before, like maybe the '60s, mm-hmm. everybody before before that time period, they have issues with like their um. Because Carvernario Galindo, the same thing happened with him. Where that's right, where, I remember mm-hmm. that. Yes. Although they it, they claim that he 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 just never bothered looking for mm-hmm. it, but I, I guess there's something with that also going on. But I mean, you know, it's it, it, it's sad either way because I mean, even 60, 65. 64, 65, 66, that's still pretty yeah, young nowadays. Yeah, it's exactly. one of those ones that's not young, but it's not old either. Yeah, yeah, it's I like know, it's, I'm so used to people reaching like 90s now, like their 90s, and it's like, why are these guys not getting It is pretty through? amazing. Yeah. You know, 
It's like, I remember that one... Remember that just badass-looking wrestler who was in a lot of the old, like, Huracan Ramirez fit, flicks that Frankenstein? Yeah, Frankenstein. Fan yeah. Leon? Yeah, Frankenstein. This big-ass guy who you... You know, when, when you... Kind of like... He was kind of like the Professor Toru Tanaka... Yes, yes! ...of Mexican movies, and when you for see those who don't know. dudes like that, you usually expect them to live 50-ish or the real, yeah. like, big badass... I think he was like in his nineties when he passed away. Yeah, you know that. Which, but I don't think he. I don't think he wrestled as much. He didn't have like a long career. Did he? he? I don't think he had a long career. Did he? Not long. Not not fly by night, but not yeah. not lengthy like a song yeah. or a blue demon. Yeah, because some of these but guys still for anybody anybody uh, to make it into their nineties, especially from his generation. Yeah, and even yeah. then, I mean, there's a lot of wrestlers who really. I think because we're used to it nowadays, where guys just don't retire. Mm-hmm. But I mean, in the past, guys. Didn't guys? Twenty year career was pretty much a good, uh, a solid career. Whereas now you look at twenty years, it's like, man, that's not that long. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> that, that usually means twenty, twenty to twenty to forty, or or eighteen to thirty eight. Mm-hmm. Whereas now it's like, why are you going to retire at forty? That's you still have like fifteen, twenty more years. In oh, the, I know, in it's Mexico, so true. Mexican rest. And and at the same time here in, in the Lucha states, Libre. it's like guys' bodies are uh, going. Are going to hell pretty quickly. Yeah, here in the in the U.S., it's really bad. I mean, it's such a high impact. Yeah. Thing now. Um, now, uh, oh, I was, was going to ask you. Well, we were talking about Hijo de Perro Aguayo. Did you read the Playboy article? Yeah, I did. Um, I actually did, thought they, it, it ba- what they basically did was they based it like months later mm-hmm. after the. I think they 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 did the 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 report. I think the writer did it during Triple Mania weekend. I'm that guessing that, right. that, I, I think it, that I, kind of like, that was about it because um, I, I know he I, made references to uh, Brian Cage and his Trump yeah because he was yeah. looking back at he was looking back at mm-hmm. what happened and then he was talking about how some of these guys like Ray contemplating retirement mm-hmm. being nervous about his Triple Mania match I think there was <laughs> the only thing I thought was funny um, they did um, when they talked about Triple A running um, over 3,000 I think it was 3,000 shows a year yes. and I was like they don't run 3,000 shows a year That's that that would be like what an average of 10 shows a day or something yeah this is true this is <laughs> or true. at least 8 shows and I'm like they don't run so I, I, I tweet um, Lucha, um, the Cubs fan I go I go um where can I find the three thousand uh, three thousand shows on your database? And he's like, I don't think I don't think they're on there. And he's like, he's like, and and maybe it's because their website hasn't been working that we can't find all those um, shows. And it's like, yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. But I I actually thought it was really w- well written. Um, there was some st- stuff where you know, if you really know about Lucha, you kind of know that they're kind of off right. on some stuff. One of the things that I always notice with people who are getting new new into, and this happens not just in Lucha, but with every type of. Um, type of uh, whatever you're going to write about you kind of fall in, you fall into that trap where you're like believing everything they tell you so yes and some at the of same it, time you want to because I remember when I you want to be friends with them it. you want to be friends with I them I want to be so friends with them I also want to look knowledgeable yeah you don't realize if you jump to a conclusion too fast you don't come off as that yeah problem. so it kind of comes off like that whereas I'm probably like I'm probably like the opposite I just don't really like I'm not mm-hmm. like that I, I don't really try to be friends with everybody I mean it's not that I don't want to be, but it's like I, I kind of have to separate that from the wrestlers. Oh, I think that's wise. Which, which is, but I mean, they're nice to me either yeah. way. But it's like I'm not, I'm not going to be emailing them and texting them. Hey guys, when, when are you coming over and be my buddy? Be Here's my buddy. Like, Here's another T-shirt. <laughs> be my buddy. I'll buy, I'll buy a T-shirt <laughs> off you. I, I'll be, I'll go broke yeah. if I keep buying T-shirts off of these guys. They're, they're a lot more expensive when you buy them off them than. <laughs> oh, it's so true. It's so true. Yeah, but it's like, but it happens with everybody. You can't really like, you can't really have a, you can't really hate the person for 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 having that in their article. Well, it sounds like he when he it was comes off, but the good college try. I mean, it yeah. sounds like he really was trying to do a quality. But he art. did a good, he did a good job. I, I mean, really, a really good. Like, if you really want to know more about like. Mm. I, I really liked it because it was right after it was months after, so it kind of gave you more of a feel of what what, what had ha- what these guys were going through right yeah. after and all that stuff. I yeah. thought that was very. I was glad he didn't like watch Triple Mania and say, "Oh man, this sucks." <laughs> 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 he didn't end it that way. Like, that really would have taken. That would have that would have been upset. That would have been uh, that would have changed the whole direction of the whole thing. Yeah, or well, the only thing that could have been worse is if he tried to make it uh, Triple Mania sound like uh, this. This uh, rise from tragedy. Yeah, yeah, that, that and that would have been even worse because he and that was the one thing. I, 
you got to give him credit because he didn't do that. Yes. Because, yes. I mean, it would have... It's not it, like an Ollie versus Anoki where you try to remember it. Is this yeah, the, and, it yeah and, it and, and it really wasn't... And maybe that's why he focused more into mm-hmm. what... Well, I mean, the focus was mainly Pearl because that was the big story. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't matter what AAA would have done the remainder of the year. That would have been the big story. If somebody right. was going to write about AAA, that was going to be what they were going to write Absolutely. about. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. So I think I, I, I really liked the article. I mean, it was something very different. I enjoyed it, too. Yeah. It was, yeah. I'm surprised it was in Playboy, but yeah. Well, Although they do do a lot of the wrestling. They do a lot of wrestling stuff, right? Yeah, they're, they're a very different magazine than they were like yeah. 34 years. Maybe because I don't, I, don't really, I don't really read Playboy or their website, so I don't really know what they write about. Yeah, yeah, I find much yeah. dirtier stuff yeah. elsewhere on the website. Yeah, I, I, that's why they're not doing I, naked yes, women anymore yes. because you can find them everywhere. If Playboy was the destination for porn for me, I would be there. But since it's not, <laughs> <laughs> like, like for wrestling, I usually go to like there's like two or three websites I go to, mm-hmm. and then like and not really Twitter's basically the the place you go nowadays. Yes, but um. But, like, for porn, I don't think that's, like, even in... That's not even in my mind. Like, Playboy is, like... I don't really know what their their thing, their thing is. Playboy is more, for me, like, little kid memories. It's, like... Yeah. Be pre-internet. They could be... They, as boys... They could have... First. They could... Who knows? Maybe they have, like, these really great articles on their website, and I'm just missing out on these. hmm You never know. Well, maybe. they used to make cracks about people... Who read Playboy? But oh, I only read them for the stories. no. But I'm saying you know how they actually are some really good. Yeah, because you you know like like nowadays with a lot of these websites that are now becoming like these super um, media mm-hmm. type websites where they have all these great art writers doing articles on on a variety of subjects. Maybe Playboy is doing that. And then yeah. oh, here's our well, here's Play- our magazine. Playboy, I don't know if you know. <laughs> here's that. our hot chicks on the side right here. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if you know the uh, that's where. The, a Christmas Story, you know the movie that we see every year on yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that first appeared in Playboy. Really? Seriously, that's not a the movie or the story. The story. Oh, okay, the story. Yeah, but no, a lot of a lot of prolific writers. I would be surprised because I mean the, the 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 whole thing about the the dad getting the leg, the late lamp. Yes, lamp yes, leg, exactly. That seems like something. What well, and um something I, somebody who who was reading Playboy would actually like write into a story or something. And also something I I was aware they they had their hands a little bit in it but something I didn't I'm reading this great great book on uh, the history of comedy uh-huh. called The Comedians by this guy named Cliff Nesteroff who oh my god uh, just put in his name this is one of the most fascinating people I've come across uh-huh. I stumbled across a podcast he did about five years ago actually it was a, a radio show out of Vancouver <laughs> You're like radio but, you know, shows podcasts yeah back then you know, they were I radio shows mixed up now uh <laughs> You know, and he'd, he'd play a lot of old comedy, and he'd, uh, you know, play a lot of novelty stuff, and had some, you know, good hit songs. Turned me on to a lot of stuff, and I, I figured he's a guy around my age. Uh, he's a guy who's, like, in his early 30s. Really? Just, yeah, who gotten into comedy LPs, and, uh, you know, kind of unwittingly became one of the foremost comedy historians, and he wrote this great book that just came out a few months ago covering vaudeville to present and one of the things i didn't know i knew that playboy had you know some of their clubs had some sort of you know stand-up comedy yeah them. yeah but i didn't realize just what a huge part they played in it like they really got people's careers off the ground uh, what the one of the funniest Bits of trivia I read was Pat Morita. Remember? Uh, yeah, the guy from Karate, Karate Kid. Karate Kid and Happy Days. Yes, yeah, that's right, right Happy Days. And uh, he. Was, I like how uh, you you confirmed it. <laughs> yeah, Happy there was there was a brief second where I thought maybe it was a different Asian guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he really was the only Asian guy back then, really. Oh, like, he was I very think, few. Yeah, and, very. And, and one who just wasn't playing. Yeah, and he was obvious. It was obvious. Pat Morita. Exactly, exactly. It wasn't like Pat Morita. You could confuse with somebody else. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah. Well, he, he started out or in his early days. He was a stand-up comic at the Playboy Club. Really, and <laughs> he would be smoking dope right when he was delivering his. Uh... What well, was he like in some of those Cheech and Chong movies? He might have not been. He, uh, well, he, something like that. I don't know. He wound up marrying uh, the girl who played Cheech's squeeze, Evelyn Guerrero. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, he was married before that, but when he split up, that's the that's the cutie he ran off yeah. with. I don't know if he ran off with her. Right? Maybe they were already divorced. But We need a Pat Morita nowadays. Like, we do. Where yeah. is our Pat Morita? Well, Ken Jong is kind of... 
You're like, who's Ken Jeong? I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember. I remember I, I the first like, time seeing him in The Hangover. Yeah. I mean, he was pretty good in that. He was funny. Yeah. Getting back to Lucha again. <laughs> her, her, did you watch the Christmas show? The CML Christmas show? I did not watch the Christmas the show. The iPay-Per-View? The disaster that was another iPay-Per-View? Uh, I saw you tweeting about it. Yes, it was a disaster. Uh, I felt bad for you. I was having flashbacks yes. for you from the AAA well, show of 2014. Yes, and I was <laughs> I was having flashbacks of that day. The one good thing was that um, there was no wrestling. I didn't have a wrestling show to go to, mm-hmm. so I didn't miss anything out, miss out on anything. That's, what but, that's um, a plus. But, you know, it's kind of ridiculous that this happened again, but... I think this is just going to be something that's going to happen every once in a while with iPay-Per-Views because it's not just CML. It's, you always hear other people arguing about this stuff. It's just mm-hmm. an ongoing thing. It's so much more of a grassroots so I have, thing. I think there's more margin of error, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, so now I have credit. <laughs> they didn't return the money, but they gave me credit yeah. on, on the Kling account. I will say, CMLL, at least in my experience... They actually been, tried. You know, they actually yeah. tr- I, I will give them credit because I, I did complain early mm-hmm. on and I was still demanding the refund, mm-hmm. but I think I kind of toned it down when they posted the the full show on on YouTube, right? Which they did on a, I think it was an unless, unlisted directly on their website, where you could find all the all mm-hmm. the all the matches, and and I realized that I didn't miss much. <laughs> you know, it was one of those um, impulse buys, yeah. Because I knew I didn't wasn't really going to miss much. The cage match I thought was pretty good. The main, the semi main event wasn't that great, but I mean, just seeing Rush. Involved with Cybernetico and Carista, oh and god, those guys, yeah, that would be which worth was it. worth it. But um, yeah, it wasn't. I wasn't that upset. Like once, once they they even made they went out of their way offering a half, giving the 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 following eye pay per view, which was the January first mm-hmm. show, which I heard was about the same as bad. <laughs> Actually, they didn't have any uh, video problems, technical problems, right? But they the show wasn't that that great. Other than the Maximo versus Kamatachi match, that's all the only match. Oh I heard. yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's that the only I one I've told. heard. That's the only one I was told was really good, and yes. everything else was just kind of like, yeah, it was okay. Nothing, nothing you missed out on. Um, but they offered that half price for those who didn't, mm-hmm. um, who missed out. And I was like, I'm gonna, I would have ordered it, but especially half price considering I had credit, it would have yeah. cost me. It would just cost me whatever I had already spent, and. Um, I would have ordered it, ordered it, but I was going to go watch Star uh, Star Wars. Right on. So I I think I think if you're going to weigh these two Star Wars, <laughs> CML I pay per view that may or may not work. And the other thing with with um, CML is that a lot of the like Kamatachi versus uh, Maximo, I don't mind watching three weeks later on a same here, same here. So it was like I like them. Yeah. I'd love to see the match, but I don't. Yeah, it, to see. the rest. Of, I mean, Super Park and, and Neurocasas. I had no interest in that in that match at all. I saw the third fall. I don't know if it was representative of the whole match, but um, I mean, yeah, Super Parker just can't hang, can't yeah, go anymore. Yeah. It's like he, he's he's I, yeah, yeah. I don't want to bag on him. You, you, I it's, like it's, him, but it, the the, uh, the one positive that came out right after the 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 I paper the Christmas show mm-hmm. was that um, we actually had a story where um, Mas Lucha reported that Thunder had had left CMLL yes I and we was, were so happy oh my gosh we were like celebrating we were like Christmas Christmas hallelujah oh it, it was like that movie where I did, we were all going thank you yes, very much I did a little thank dance thank you very much I was doing That's the fuego the dance I was doing the fuego dance right after that <laughs> and then like like I, I think the next day um, Thunder mentioned he wasn't gone and then CMLL mentioned he wasn't gone either so I was like so bummed oh, like it was gone. like the, he is way gone it's like man. it's like it's like this not ongoing, like, when is he going to just leave? Why can't we get this guy to go somewhere else? Because it's like, it's just not working. Oh, I mean, man, how it's not maybe he And he's not bad enough where he can get hurt where he could just leave. <laughs> I don't want to wish <laughs> injury. I don't want to wish injury on I, him. I don't want to wish injury on him. I just hope he doesn't hurt somebody else. He's I just mean, so bad. He it's is. Like, he's terrible. And, you know, it's terrible. worse because then they brought in Super Parka, who's bad. Pierrot is on the mm-hmm. show. Um, I will give Cybernetico credit. He's not that good. Mm-hmm. He's bordering on bad. <laughs> but at least <laughs> he's got enough charisma where he can actually go with the charisma. And yes. him and Rush will end up having good chemistry just because of Rush's willingness to like just chop the shit out of him, beat the shit out and of like, him. And like I said before, man, if they're not hurting anybody. I don't care if they're... And Cybernetico actually took there. a yeah. dive, too. So it was like, I mean, he actually That's caught cool. somebody. Now, so. if you can draw a crowd 
Uh, yeah, that's the other thing. If you can draw a crowd and you're not hurting other people. Although I don't know if you can draw a crowd because, I mean, those crowds on Sundays haven't been yeah, that great. Yeah, with that, <laughs> I guess time will tell on that yeah. one when the chips are really down, when you, the program really uh, yeah. is underway. The, the big... I have to... I was going to open the show by complaining about this. Uh-huh. Um, the, that following... Um, they had the other cage match on, on Monday, mm-hmm. the Puebla show, where they had... Um, Policeman lose the, his hair. Oh yes, but I got a. I, I'm pretty upset. Volador Jr. in that man. I think it was that show. Mm-hmm. I'm, I think it was that show. Oh, we got a phone call. Hello. Oh. Hold on. There is an incoming call to the studios at Walnut Kills, California. I want to know who Fredo Hello? is talking to. Hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Turn your radio down, sir. We got a congrats. Our first congratulations call for our. For 2016, we got a... What are those? Um, a new microwave oven. It's so funny. We signed up to that government thing to, like, block all the calls. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> now they're calling you? Yes, they're calling. It's like, why are they calling? Is this, like, an annual thing we have to sign up for? Oh, or, I don't... I have no idea. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, I was going to... I was... Uh, Volador. Volador, yeah. yeah. Um, I like how we're just going to leave the phone call. <laughs> I'll probably edit it out. Uh, yes, you... Or probably not because I'm still talking about it, it right so now. So. Brief. It was yeah, so brief. Yeah. Uh, so, and I'll, I'm probably too lazy to edit that out. Yeah. Um, I should have just got a co- Hey, what's up, Conan? <laughs> <laughs> and, just, I, and I'll be sitting going, Conan O'Brien, uh, you know him? Yes. yes. Just made, made up some name. I think we'll do that from now on. <laughs> that sounds when good. We get a, when we get one of those calls. Um, Volador Jr. kicked the crap out of Mihei. Did you see the, the, the little the, the animated... GIF on the on um, GIF no, or didn't. GIF or whatever it's called. <laughs> what is he angry? At that? It's just his, his thing. Like wow. Mihe walks into the ring, and as Mihe walks in, Volador Junior is wearing his Superman outfit. Yeah, <laughs> he just super kicks him right, oh, and like you just see Mihe like do a take a crazy bump. I love Mihe. Like he's like he's, oh, he's he takes great. great bumps off of him. But they have like this ongoing rivalry between the two, and it's like it's just hilarious. Um, yeah, but they, they actually, they had Mephisto teaming with um, Cranio and Ripper. Mm-hmm. So Mephisto, if, for those following Mephisto for like two weeks, was part of Infer- um, Hijos del Inferno, mm-hmm. which is his group with um, Efesto and Luciferno. Yes. He's part of the Hell Brothers with um, oh, yes, Cibernetico yes. and Ch- Charlie Rockstar. Mm-hmm. We got to talk about Charlie Rockstar. I was, yeah, I didn't even write that. Mm-hmm. We, he, was, he was in out of prison, right, when we last did our podcast? No, I don't think he okay, was. Okay, so Wait, we'll talk he? about. I don't think so. It was right. I can't. Yeah, remember. see, that's the problem with doing the podcast. We need to start taking notes. Yes. of what we need to do. Yes, we. Well, actually, I have to look back on the on the previous <laughs> podcast and and see the see if, if part of me wants to say that it was brought up. I I'm mean, get. I'm guessing he was out in December, wasn't he? So Fredo was uh, looking up the status of Charlie the Rock. Yeah. Star. So so um, Mephisto's with that with that um with the Hell Brothers with um. Let me get back no. to that. With uh, Cibernetico and Charlie Rockstar. And then um, for like two weeks, he was part of the, the Invasores with mm-hmm. Ripper and uh, Cranio. Yes. I actually like Cranio. I don't know what your thoughts are on Cranio. Uh, you know, I, I, I you don't haven't like watched him? him closely enough, so you I despise can't honestly him? say. Do you no, dis- I don't despise him. I despise Thunder. That's it. <laughs> Maybe he's a nice guy side of the ring, but as far as in Cranio's, oh, Cranio's oh. very un. I think he's very underrated. Plus, he takes topes like all the time, like two, three topes in a row in a row he's, towards him. He's willing. He's, yeah, he's always willing. He's able. Um, yeah, we didn't talk about Charlie Rockstar, so we got that's another story we got to talk about. That was the big surprise. Yeah, that was the big surprise, and that really was a surprise because nobody knew he was out of prison. For those who do, I can't remember. We what didn't mention this. We didn't mention this. Be. Yeah, we didn't mention this in the last podcast. Um, Charlie Rockstar, for those who don't know, is actually um, the former Charlie, Charlie Manson, Manson uh, from AAA. Mm-hmm. He's now with Lucha Libre Elite and part of Los Hell Brothers with um, Cibernetico. He had been in prison for like what three years re- or for 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 a lot for a while. A, beating up a cop, and yeah, beating up pretty bad. Beating up a couple of cops, yeah, and one of them actually like really had, really was, was he, badly hurt. Was he trying to pretend he was Haku or something? I mean, yeah, but I mean, everybody assumed he was still in prison because I think he had like a sentence of like six seven years, and I think he got out earlier. Like he, he mentioned, he got out early because of um, he actually like did um. Part of I think there's a there's a program mm-hmm. in, in in prison where if you'd help other 
prisoners, mm -hmm. like learn something or whatever, you could actually get um, some time off, time oh, cut okay. down. Okay, like credit. So, yeah, some credit. So um, he taught them how to wrestle, which I don't know why he would. You want like more? <laughs> you don't want more ex cons. And <laughs> well, can, I, can I tell you about uh, the late Duke Myers, who just passed away this last year? Meeting him. Uh huh. Um, uh, Ed Moretti introduced Was this the guy who wrestled in um, Stampede? Yes. Really? Yes. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, we're talking and he's, you know, Ed Moretti introduces us as Crutcher Wrestling goes, oh, you're a little guy, you know, and he's, uh, and I, you know, told him, well, I, I, I you're like, yeah, I'm a little guy. <laughs> I, no doubt, of, especially, you know, next to Ed Moretti and Duke Martin. Yeah, yeah, you're a little guy. But he says, but he says, oh, no, no, I understand what you're talking about. I, I know how to take a lot to go. Wow. And I go, oh, a lot to go. And going, you know, so you learned some Mexican style. He says, oh, those were my first lessons. I go, oh, where did you learn? He goes, when I was in prison. <laughs> and he's serious. He's wow, serious. really? He's a nice guy. He's yeah. a super nice guy. I, yeah. I was really sad when I heard of his past. Oh, Very sucks. friendly. But, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that, so that... I mean, I think when when that surprise, because I think it was that the, the the following week after we did our podcast that mm -hmm. that happened, um, everybody just assumed it was going to be Averno. Again, That's what I, I think that was because Averno was was um, was I being was trying to remember who I Averno was being was promoted on a variety of shows at that that weekend. I think the the a show in New York mm -hmm. and then the show in um, in Querétaro. Okay. And then the, that show also, but that show didn't mention him. They just said there was going to be a surprise. So then, um, to our surprise, it was Charlie Rockstar, which I thought was actually a much bigger surprise it, than I think. It blew me away. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was did, shocked. Yeah, that, that was a legitimate shock. And that they were able to keep it under wraps. Yes. That's so rare in wrestling. You know, it's so weird. Lucha, that's the one thing we, know, we learned with Lucha in 2015. You could still keep secrets in Lucha. Yes. <laughs> that, Sombra, going to WWE, in fact, this Alberto. This Alberto, Caristico, year. Cibernetico. None of these guys have. There was no really long, uh, drawn out. I can't think of another year where any promotion or promotions pulled off that many in one year. There's, and and well, not just them. I'm talking about surprises among the the wrestlers. Yeah, and, yeah, and the yeah. Promotions. Yes. Then, then I guess. Yeah, I mean the surprises. Yeah, Caristico and yeah, the surprises that they were able to get Cibernetico. But yeah. You know, you when you start pr when that becomes the hook for your promotion to draw fans, you know mm -hmm. it's going to wear out. I mean, right oh, now, God, yeah. right now they're they're excited about bringing in Connect. Well, I mean, and Connect's like fucking seventy something oh, totally, years old. Totally, the only person who looks older than, than Mil Mascaras. Mil Mascaras. <laughs> uh, well, it's like the whole Kogan syndrome. You bring him in, he gets a big pop for a few weeks, but then the thrill is gone yeah. you got to bring it back like eight months later in order to get that same effect well you know there's always going to be somebody upset in the, on the other side of like with AAA and a promotion oh absolutely somebody's going to jump at some point so you're always going to have that one person but it's like at some point the, the names aren't going to be as big as what you want oh, God, yeah. what you're thinking and, 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 yeah there might be a big search for a moment or two but yeah. it, it takes some I'm just glad this promotion current. what I like about this promotion about Lucha Elite is that they're like getting traumas on on or Rena Mexico shows more. Oh, I watched the match that you had mentioned, the uh, uh, Carvernario and Rey Hechicero versus Los Traumas. From uh, Elite? I, I forget where it was from, to be honest with you. But it's just so cool getting to see them work together. Yeah, I don't think I saw... Oh yeah, that's right. One of the one of the I, yeah one yeah. of the I think it was one of the indie shows. I can't remember. Isn't it amazing? I actually watched yeah. some wrestling. Yeah. When I, when I heard, <laughs> I'm like trying to remember. I'm like, <laughs> this is probably from September, October, and I'm when, like, I can't remember when this. When I heard that it was going to be a tag team of uh, Hechi Sero and Carvernario, yeah. I was there. And then when I heard that it was Los Traumas, I'm like, yeah. I am so. Th You're like, I know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, that was really cool. And oh, it's, it's funny when you talk about three thousand shows in AAA. Now, what I've been doing, like, a lot You've been lately, watching AAA? Oh, God. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being facetious. AAA is just not my cup of tea. Yeah. It's good, but it's not my cup of tea. But, no, I've been really into looking through some of the 60s. Uh, but, you know what, but, but you know what's interesting? You say that about AAA, but you'll watch Lucha Underground. So it kind of evens out. Yeah, this is yeah, true. This is true. Because I think I think if you're gonna watch AAA and you want to have them booked properly, you watch Lucha Underground. Like the guys, it's, the guys you like, the guys you like. Yeah, you, you couldn't have put it better. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, you watch AAA and you're like, why is Aerostar like working 
in this six way match, and then you're, although the That's, matches are the trios matches are, you maybe no, you just don't really want good good and stuff, but nobody really stands out. Yeah, I you, mean in Lucha Underground you get to yeah you get to see them and they have focus. There's more focus exactly. on exactly. We get to look at Pentagon yeah. and know he's Pentagon. Yeah. You, you know? get you get more built to the characters. Too. Absolutely. So get back to the so uh, I'm, I've been really getting into looking through a lot of the old 60s magazines. You know, these magazines I've had since I was, what? Yeah. Uh, 10, 12, 19. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's one magazine that I like even better than Boxy Lucha, and that was the magazine KO. Uh-huh. What I love is, my God, they had results from so many shows in one day. Like, I think it was 66, 1966, just Christmas shows from Arena Mexico to the you know, smallest Cubs, call the, Cap the, Town. The, the Cubs fan is listening to this and he's probably wondering why aren't you guys say, why aren't you sending me these results and lineups? Well, Kurt? I'm writing them down. Actually. <laughs> I'm actually writing down these uh, results because what I've been doing is I'm they they you know don't just list Mexico City. They list Juarez. They miss really Cordoba and Veracruz. Yeah. And I've been doing. The fun part, yeah, because um, the other the, the other magazines didn't do it as often. Like there would be like some, well, they would like Box Lucha would, yes, to an extent, then, but then yes. they wouldn't go too far. Like there wasn't like as exactly. much information. Where they would have independent shows in K, uh, KO magazine. The fun part is finding these indie guys and seeing if you can find anything on the internet. Yeah, uh, Veracruz, uh, the most interesting thing, the guy there in, in the sixties, Marinaro Acosta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could tell he's a regional star, and I'm like, huh. Wonder whatever happened to him, and in Veracruz, the whole family is, is kind of like a Superboy and his family. There's yeah, like, there's a whole multi generational family. Is there like a? Is there? Do they have a couple of wacky friends doing podcasts at their house? <laughs> <laughs> well, if so, I think we've got to start a feud with them. Veracruz versus Los Angeles. Yeah, Los Angeles yeah. but no, th- th- and there was one. Okay, I was looking in a magazine called Zoss, uh-huh. 1952. And they covered a match, a hair versus hair, where Cavernario Galindo beat a guy named Pancho Valentino. Have you heard that name? Before? Pancho Val- Valentino, no. Well, you know, usually when I'd see these guys whose names I didn't recognize, I'd do a search. Sometimes I could find little references. Sometimes I could find, you know, regional history. What if I said I knew who he was? Would, I, would that really impress you? It would not shock me, and I'll tell you why. Would you be like, holy shit, this guy, Fredo knows his shit. <laughs> I already know you know you're, I'm the one who needs to know the shit You're the okay, one who yeah. knows the shit No, it, the reason it wouldn't Well, you know what's what's bad is like We do the We we, we end the show And then you guys remind, tell me You know who he was? He was this other guy It's like, oh, that's right <laughs> <laughs> Like the whole uh, The whole uh, The Mascara Magica Remember you guys Yes, were, yes And I didn't. I was like, who are you talking about? It's like, oh, why didn't you guys tell me It was Mascara Magica? You could have told me that all along It's so easy to do it Yes, in yes It's, it's okay. so easy to see things like, well, Back the reason I wouldn't be shocked if uh, you had known who he was is I... Pancho Valentino for those yeah, who... I Google his name, and his nickname was not a nickname while he was a wrestler. His and after na- he's a wrestler called His him. nickname wasn't Pancho? <laughs> no, it was his real name. Really? Don't you know? Don't you know? It's a very common name. <laughs> in Mexico, a lot of the, in Veracruz. <laughs> yeah, a lot of my Scottish uh, ancestors named their kids Pancho, Pancho because it's a, you know it's an Indo-European name. No, uh, his nickname was the Priest Killer. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a this. I'm I'm surprised we've never heard of it before because I found tons of stories about it. He and. Uh, he was a wrestler who's getting a pretty big push in the early 50s. Uh, what was not publicized was he had been in and out of prison 15 times. Oh. In 1957, he and several other guys were uh, had this idea to rob this priest. There was a Peruvian priest. <laughs> of all the people that rob, let's rob the priest. Well, that's a... F- <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, but this, I'm guessing this is like a priest that had like a very nice setup, you know, like exactly. this, this back in a, those days. This was a priest whose parents were into, uh, who, uh, I don't know if they were independently wealthy. Well, he's from a rich family. Yeah, and it's Mexico too, which is a very Catholic. Uh, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, so they, kind of like the thing with that happened to Jerry Lawler a few years ago, they, they heard rumor that he had a whole bunch of cash in the church. And so they went to rob him. They... Uh, 
came across another uh, priest. I don't know if they mistook this priest for him or... Or they, they were just surprised he was there. Yeah, and Pancho Valentino, I guess, put him in a wrestling hold and the priest actually started fighting back. Was that a backcracker? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wish that's all You're like, they didn't have it back then. <laughs> I wish that's all it was because they tortured him trying oh, to get the geez. money and ended up killing him. And Pancho Valentino became a star based off of that. Made he a, tried made to make a, a run for it. If, if I remember right, I think it was... I think he tried to smuggle one of his sons. Uh, the only son he wanted anything to do was like a four-year-old kid. Yeah, the rest of them were like, he's like, fuck you guys, I don't yeah, want you. Yeah, that's seriously what it was, very literally. <laughs> this he, four-year-old has potential. <laughs> he had, he had f uh, kids from four different women, but there was only one he was in. This guy with. sounds like a really class guy. Oh, what a classy yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, How he made it into the wrestling business, I'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know that old uh, Strangler Lewis quote about how there's never been a breath of scandal in the business? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, I've seen a lot of lawyers and politicians in jail, but I've never met a wrestler in jail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see if he said that with a straight yeah. face. Well, uh, so this guy ends up being sentenced to 33 years, and uh, I, I think he goes undergoes one of these great transformations. And, Finds God. Suddenly, I think he, has, yeah. he went from priest killer to yeah. yeah but, but there's a there's a humorous antidote uh, anecdote <laughs> antidote too. Boy, I sound brilliant. <laughs> antidote finding finding Antidotes. Jesus in church uh, in jail is always yeah, a good antidote. Him up, God gave him a fix. Yes. the Sunny Austin story. Yeah. Uh, no, the funny anecdote was he was going to be released early in 1977 and. Uh, uh, about a little over a week before his release, uh, he had some sort of seizure and drowned in his own vomit. Oh. The end. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I was going to ask you, Um, I was looking at that magazine, um, I think it's Clinch? Or yes, Punch. Punch. Punch, yes. With the Punch? Yes. Yeah, I think it the is. The one punch. with a bright blue cover. Yeah, it's like yes. a, a, a green, or it's green and, a, and yes. another one. Um, I think it has um, Bobby Bonales on the cover, I think. That's the one, yes. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask you about that. Uh, what's the deal with that magazine? You know why? Because it's got Stanley Weston writing, wrote for that magazine. And I, I think, didn't realize that. I yeah. didn't realize that. I only had a few. But he wrote about like American wrestling. You know, the, the American wrestler, but they, it's written in Spanish, but they like, they were the ones who were writing. Yes. You know, I don't know a lot about that magazine. Really? They're, um... I find references to it online a lot. Like, I'll, yeah. like the covers were... They weren't as cool as the Lucha Libre magazine. They look more artsy, like, the more... Yes, like Because yes. of, of the period. I, you know, I didn't realize Stanley Western... Yeah, I saw a couple of American, like, names on there. It was another one that has some pretty good coverage. Yeah, they actually... They, I, I, I was going to do a write-up on it. I haven't oh, had you time. should. I, yeah. I, I, just, I just don't know if I should do the... I don't know if I want to do the Stanley Weston stuff. It's American wrestling, because I don't really... I think that makes it interesting, yeah. though, just to see the... Because I, I hate American wrestling. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, but that's what I love. Actually, about I don't hate America. I just hate more work. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I love about the Mexican Max. Like one of the boxy luchas from uh, 1960, they had a whole story on uh, Big Daddy Lipscomb. Yeah, I uh, just, I, I, I was just wondering because I, I was like, Stanley Weston, isn't that a? He's in the. Didn't he just make it into the Observer Hall of yeah, Fame or something? Yeah, he was the top yeah. dog before Bill Apter. Yeah, was Stanley like, Weston. Maybe Apter's the one to ask about that. Yes, actually, yes. Yeah, he could probably fill I'll call him. But I do have his number, though. Yeah. <laughs> Let me call him. Give him a buzz. I'll call him during lunch. Hey. Tell hey, him Lucky Pierre here. says hi from down below. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird. Like, if you would have told me, like, 20, 30 years ago I would have met Bill Apter, I would have been, like, just like, no, I wouldn't have met him. Oh, I know what you mean. And I don't think he really gets it. I'm sure he probably gets, he understands. But probably does in his mind is probably not this thing like where he's thinking about. Well, it's funny because he's he, such a nice guy. He's, too, a, he's probably, a really nice, really guy. nice he, guy. He doesn't go around throwing himself yeah. around as his big. Same off thing with Dave Meltzer, although although yes. I I kind of got into the whole insider stuff, not the well yeah the insider stuff a little later in life, so it wasn't like something I was like as a kid. Right. Like I wasn't into it like at fifteen, sixteen years old. More like in my my later years. Actually, no, it might have been fifteen, sixteen years. Old. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about it, yeah, because I no because I think. I think I first saw the Observer mentioned on online mm -hmm. on that old website, on um, Gary Will's website. Oh yes, remember that site where he had I the remember that site. yeah where he was selling tributes and all that. Mm -hmm. That had to be like in the mid mid nineties, wasn't that? Somewhere around the that mid nineties. Right. Yeah, 
because I remember it was very, and I just jotted down the the address and everything, and then I, I it took me like a year to decide if I wanted to subscribe to it, because I had, I had subscribed to that one um, PWI newsletter. Remember oh, that? <laughs> yes, yeah. Actually, I didn't subscribe. They sent me one for free, and it was like I was like, dude, I know this stuff. Why am I getting this? And I just like I probably still have it somewhere. Oh, I remember. I remember when the Observer first came out the 80s version I didn't know about the 70s version at the time but that's mm-hmm. when my friend Lloyd Lee and I we put some little rag out um, kind of covering the local scene a bit of Mexico but we got uh, we got a letter from Dave Meltzer that he was sending out to people who put out sheets or people who kind of I think he saw in magazines or, or other friends sheets uh, saying I'm starting a newsletter uh and he, he had all his awards that he has now. Yeah. Uh, uh, though a little different than they are now. Uh, and when do you put down your top 50 wrestlers? And I said, top 50 wrestlers? And yeah. we thought, man, this sounds a little wacky. And then... And you're like, Raul Mata. <laughs> Carlos Mata. Oh, I think I put Tony Rocco up <laughs> Tony there. Rocco. I think I got some laughs from that. Yeah. But... But you know, it's kind of weird. You probably got laughs back then, but I bet you if you like did that top 50 and you had guys analyze it nowadays... They'd be like, hey, he's not that off with Tony Rock because we've Absolutely, seen so much stuff. Yeah, I agree. You have more of a understanding of work rate and stuff like that, whereas back then it was like a little more... It's like, he's not over. Yeah, he's not over. Work rate wasn't... like It was kind of like... It's still kind of... There's still issues with that stuff, but it's like still... There's a little more open-mindedness it, to it. Exactly. Not as much as you would hope, but there's still enough. Oh, it, it was also funny because a lot of people would... Uh, a lot of like the smart fans before the smart sheets were out... They would talk about how Andre sucked, how Andre the Giant's like the worst worker. They hate having to see Andre. And then you'd say how much you like Johnny Rods. And they're going, well, he never wins. And I say, okay, but if you use that logic, then Andre the Giant should be the greatest wrestler in the history of yeah. mankind. Because he never loses. You know, it's so weird. they had this weird... Yes, because it, it's weird. When I, when I do my list, it, people are always like, why would you rank like Cibernetico in a top 100 or something like that? It's like the guy is great in, on pro. Like I always, when I do my list, when I used to do my list, I, I probably will continue do, doing it. I always do like five categories where it's work rate, charisma, mic skills, absolutely, um, drawing power. You know, variety. Not not just five categories. There's there's a bunch of reasons, factors to why a guy and if you're good is doing over. Seriously, that's how it should. Be. Yeah, because I mean, see, like certain guys. I mean, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, if you do a, a, a top 100, he'd never make the list because he wasn't that great of a worker. Yes. But, I mean, if you do add everything else that he's done, drawing power, attendant, uh, all this other stuff, he's easily one of the three or four greatest wrestlers of all time, Absolutely. you know? Absolutely, and that's one of the... That's, even if you hated him, even what happens with him, like, later in life... And that's part of the charm of wrestling. Yes. Is somebody being able to go up there and just light up a place Yes. yes. You know, it's like... Uh, but, so, yeah, anyway, when Meltzer sent us the first issue... Uh, it was the first time we ever saw a newsletter, with the exception of the Weasels' World of Wrestling by Norman Dooley. Uh-huh. Uh, it was the first time we ever saw a newsletter that completely, 100% broke kayfabe. Before they would have newsletters would do stuff where you could read in between the lines. Yeah. And Norman Dooley's newsletter, he only sent to people who uh, he knew followed the business seriously. And he was a good friend of Jim Cornette's back in the day. Yeah. But uh, we were saying, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Uh, we've always been told, don't do this. Yeah. Don't do this. Yeah, because that's even like my mental mentality with my website. I can write like stuff that's a little more um, real, you know, breaking kayfabe and stuff like that. Yeah. But there's certain stuff you don't break. Like, I'm not going to do what, what Meltzer's going to do. Like, remember Lismark, when Lismark passed, the, mm-hmm. passed away. Um, <laughs> Meltzer wrote, um, Juan Baños passed, um, passed away. Like if you see the first, uh, was the first headline was that. that, and then later on he switched it to Lismark. Pa- um, Lismark passed away, and I was like, well, "Who's gonna know who Juan Baños is?" I don't even yeah, think. Yeah, when the, they said Hall of Famer Juan Baños, Juan Baños. That I was, was like, odd. "Who?" Yeah, that, that was that's what the headline was, yeah. and then he changed it. I think Brian or Dave must have changed it afterwards, or whoever's in charge. They're like, "Nobody's gonna know who that is." Because uh, like, that would like be be saying uh, Terry Bollea passes away when everybody. Yeah, so might like, as well just say Hulk Hogan. My you know? site, my site. I immediately wrote Lismark passed away yeah. it wasn't like I, I don't i don't even think i i i even had like wondered if i should write his name because he was he still was masked you only know his name because of um that's true his yeah. his, his son that's mm-hmm. basically the only reason you know his name but it's like it's like when you look at what you're doing on a, a website 
and then you want to do it on a on a newsletter, you're like, yeah, I can't really do some of the stuff. I exactly you can't you got to kayfabe some of the stuff on a newsletter, whereas. Yeah, there's a little website, yeah. like I, li- I, I like the you know you you, you kind of tiptoe around the person's you know birth name when they have a mask. I mean, not not to extreme it. To, well, I do because I, I don't like I don't like I, I've never liked what what Meltzer does where he writes like connect and then he'll write his name or something. Mm-hmm. I would never do that, right? Because it's it's not it's not that's not part of lucha. That's not you got to keep it like you got to keep some level of kayfabe. That's within true. Lucha, there's exceptions like you know with the Broncos. when they die, Apparently, it's they different. Knew, they everybody knew they were the Alvarado. Yes, and yes, the and they, yeah, 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 yeah. You know that. Uh, but well, but but back then, I mean, there were never you never talked about wrestling in a working aspect. You never mm-hmm. talked about somebody being put over. You were supposed to write about like it was. Yeah, real, but yeah. They dropped little, you know, like Ring Wrestling was an interesting magazine. It was like a very historical magazine, but. They would never say this is a work, and they generally push the heels as gen- generally bad people. <laughs> Not as much as like a Bill After Mag. Yeah. But uh, a lot of what I remember most is for a few years, a lot of the people who had followed the rules and not broken kayfabe with the magazines were just livid at Meltzer. I, well, you I, see, it's weird. I think, I think they were upset that he had the. I mean, he he took a leap of faith he, it, he has the balls to... it's weird because you can't really there's not a lot of fans who can actually like enjoy both mm-hmm. like they can't enjoy the, like the, the observer and they can't enjoy like the after mags yeah because I always found enjoyment in both of them I, I mean I always enjoy like the after mags their, their PWI 500 list I always found it ridiculous it was, yes, all, yes. it was always really screwed up and my favorite when thing. I took part in it it was like one of the worst things like I ever saw like because just you're trying to come up with like a like when you're doing when you, when you when you're doing a list, you're like, man, why is why are they doing this? But worse, it's not even like some of the times it wasn't like the. I think Dean Malenko made like the number one one year, and mm-hmm. it was like, how did he make it? Yes, yes. Like he wasn't. What I love, what I always love about that 500 list is, you know how serious Rob Courtney crazes. About, yes. like, he made the list one year. And everybody knew it would drive him crazy, so they're all going, Rob, congratulations! Just, Shut up! I don't want to hear that I made the PWI 500. And of course, they did it all the more. Yeah, um, yeah. God bless him. <laughs> yeah, it's... it's... Well, well, but did, did you ever see the earlier ones? Like, uh, oh God, my favorite actor was around 1980, where it starts... The story starts off where there's this um, scientist who's weeping because he has to destroy Matilda the computer... Because this computer was supposed to, I think, I don't know, solve world peace or something like that. But Oliver Humperdinck snuck into the laboratory and programmed it to de- uh, to show him how to destroy the Briscoe Brothers. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and I just thought, oh, the o- man, I want to write for this magazine. Yeah, the, the only the only time I ever read on, on one of the aftermaths about a computer was when they did um they did an article. I think this was like probably 91, 92. And they had uh, the computer confirms... Um, the Steiner brothers are the best tag team in the world. Oh yeah, yeah. And it was like, but they actually, it actually was cool because they had the Steiner brothers, and the second best tag team was I, I think Doc and Gordy, and then like, oh. and then like, I think it was um, Misao and Kawada, or one of the one of those combinations at that time. Right. And I was like, and then Sasaki and Hase. I'm like, dude, this computer is pretty smart. <laughs> it's smarter than maybe maybe the Aftermax should use They've this come more. Long yeah, they, they, it's a lot better because I mean the WWE tag teams weren't really that good. I think the road words were like six or something. But I was like, oh, this is really cool. And I, but it, I always enjoyed the the difference with all those. And you know that's how Boxy Lucha is. Also, you read that stuff and it's like. You read the stories, but they, they're more of about they're more about telling you what, what happened in the match. What happened? Like where that. the Lucha Libre magazine was a little more toward what the after is more more the presentation. The yeah, the design. presentation of the characters yeah. and stuff like that. And it was more col- colorful because Lucha. I think Lucha allows you to like. You don't really have to like fake a bunch of stories because Those these guys groups. because these guys legitimately have some crazy stories to tell you and their characters just Absolutely. wearing the mask and stuff like that. And then you could ha- show the results, and like they would like they had these really good writers to like over exaggerate like the matches and stuff like that, like make it sound like you're like talking about this amazing match. Like every match is WrestleMania. Yeah, like WrestleMania. Gotcha. And, hey, I mean, <laughs> if you're you're reading it now and you're like 
Santo versus Blue Demon. It's like, yeah, this was had to be really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, totally. Yes, or or the Toreo shows. It's like, oh, this had to be great. And you know, you watch, you read the lineups to those shows. It's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was great. Mm-hmm. And then when you get the following week when when they're recapping the show, it's like, yeah, it had to be that great. Nobody's gonna deny it. And it's, oh, there's totally. a large crowd too. Hey, so. seeing a tag team of Peru Aguayo and Abdullah the Butcher. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh man, how I would have loved. Yeah, to that would have been great. So they had the big story for 2015 was um, really that Pero passing away and um, all those guys moving, leaving promotion. It's like yeah, Sombra, this, Sombra really being the big surprise. I think Sombra, I would, I would say if you had to point to a wrestler of the year, there's a guy who made a huge impact in CMLL and just the last four months that he was there was re- were really well. Absolutely, and and in heading out, he he left on such a professional level. Yeah. You know, I, well, he gets my nod as Luchador del. You Mario. did, for me personally, yes. You, you told Marcolis, Ken Mark. Uh, he didn't ask me who I thought of wrestler of the year. I told. Oh, he didn't. No, but he asked me uh, Technico of the year and uh, Ruda of the year. Ruda of the year, and Volador Technico, Rush, Rudo. Wow, that's those are good picks. I I I, I told him um, Luchador of the year, Dragon Lee. That's a good one. In uh, fact, I in fact I think I told him. And then you talked a bit about Dragon Lee and Kamatachi being awesome. Did I you see I, the Did you see the Dragon Lee to Kamatachi? Yes, match? I loved it. Oh, okay, I loved it, especially since I. That's another match we it happened right after the, our last podcast. Well, we're talking about the year in Ruru, so the, I mean that's basically the whole year, basically Dragon Lee versus Kamatachi. I, I, my wish for 2016 is that Kamatachi just stays stays in Mexico. Mexico. Please, <laughs> he's please. staying. He's staying for at least another month. So. I really enjoy him. Yeah, I think. I think it's. I think what's happening is he's probably going to do the similar to like um, Namahagwe because Namahagwe didn't leave right away after. Um, I think he left. No, yeah, I think he did show up in Fantastic Mania for the, mm-hmm. the the last year. So he's he's there a little longer. I mean, I don't know what's going on. Maybe he wants to. Maybe he's decided to stay in CMLL. <laughs> he loves it so much. He's How he's you really not? good. He's really good. Um, yeah. Yes. I think I said technical of the year. I I, I said Dragon Lee. Mm-hmm. But I also said because. Um, I think Cubs fan had mentioned um, Volador Jr. and I, you just mentioned Volador Jr. Yeah, in fact, I and I, I would agree, but I, I, I'm still upset at him super kicking me. Hey, so <laughs> I like that. I like. I probably that. won't. I won't take him. That is the reason. I did. I did mention to Marco. Uh, and I am going to tell I, if we see Volador Jr. again, I'm going to tell him to stop hitting me. Hey, <laughs> that'll be on. That'll be on. We will have that tape. And I yes, I will be videoing. That. Yes, I will be videotaping yes. that as you tell him. Yes. Hopefully he doesn't super kick me. I'll wear my crash helmet, which I especially know. especially after, after we told him TNA was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we were. I was watching TNA. Well, you know they changed channels. We didn't know they were. Well, you know, you know, since yeah. there's there's such a, a he doesn't have pop TV. He, it could be dead for all. I don't knows. think I have pop TV either. You probably do. It's TV guy channel. Yeah. No, actually, we're getting rid of our cable. Really? What are you gonna do? Uh, go through Hulu, YouTube, all them. Oh, you're you're not gonna get TV anymore. Watch so little TV. Yeah, you know. It's, yeah, because you were telling me, and you're not. You get your news through the through um the internet, anyways, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's like it, it's a whole different world. Yeah, that's what I probably would do at some point too. It's weird thinking back when I was younger, and there was VHF and UHF. To me, the adventure was finding. A distant UHF station that carried a wrestling show. And plus, you're not playing in, with the antennas, trying to get plus, them to tune. Plus, in. the other thing is you're not into sports either. You're not. This a is sports true. Guy. Yes, yeah. yes, that's true. Your wrestling, it's different. You could actually watch it. Well, online. like the, the other sport that I do enjoy is sumo, but uh, I get that because my uh, brother-in-law downloads it from various sources. Because you can't just watch it on TV. Yeah, you have to look for it. Yeah, he, down, he downloads it via illegal means or. <laughs> no, I don't know what it. I don't think there it might is. be actually a service that I, I don't know. Well, there's this great show he had. I can't, I can't remember the guy's name. You don't have to admit that he downloads it illegally. I don't care. Well, well if he's downloading, <laughs> hello. It, if, he, <laughs> if he's downloading it illegal, it's from an illegal yeah. source because it's a guy who will show each day of the tournament, but he'll have subtitles narrating the moves. Wow, that's and actually really impressive. It's really cool, because I've been watching Sumo on and off since 95. I'm guessing there's this somebody... this is the first year I'm really learning about it. It's probably like tape trading with um, Sumo and all that stuff. Probably, yes, yeah. yes. And there's the another wrestling. show he found where it's a guy who... I think he's a teacher in Japan. He's an American who mm. teaches, uh, I think, English in Japan. And uh, he has like a 
collection. Yeah, I mean, he, he kind of narrates who the up-and-coming stars are. Who, oh, he does a show. Yeah, yeah, and he'll oh. show the highlights. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, Fantastic you're getting rid of it. Fantastic mania Oh, yeah, Fantastic mania is coming up. Should be fun. Later this month. Kurt's excited. Are you going to order I it? Am, are you, uh, you going to order New Japan World or wait I'm till... Thinking the... <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Barbaro, he is there. And is Hechishiro going? Yes. Yes, then I think yes, I'm Yes, Hechishiro will be there. Hechishiro will be there. The, um, the Panther will be there. It's actually like the best workers going. Oh, right. <laughs> I remember. Pan- I forgot Panther's going. Yeah, I... Yeah, they announced the lineups. Well, for those of you wondering what we're talking about, the okay, that makes me feel old because it was 26 years ago I saw his old man wrestle in Japan. That's me calling him old man. Well, he is old. Do you hey, know, that was kind of, oh, you know, know, that was the other He's cool thing. My age, the, the Panther won the mask um, of Super Commando. And, oh, that's right. Uh, in the cage. And the, for um, for those who getting back to the Inferno in a ring <laughs> thing, um, Super Commando mentioned he was thinking of... Um, He's left CMLL, mm-hmm. and he's not sure if he's going to continue wrestling. Oh, really? Because he's he's not sure about... I don't know if it's just him saying... He said because the mask kind of affected him personally mm-hmm. and, and professionally. I don't know what... I don't, I, I'm, I'm thinking that's more. there's more to it than just that, because... Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't think it's just... Maybe, maybe he got a better job or something. Oh, and other big news, Danny Casas beat Tuscano. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that on our, for those wondering, I wrote that on our list of things to talk about. It's funny. I, uh, I, I, we were going to talk about TNA, but we didn't want to bore you guys about that. That's right. Or upset you guys. Yes. Um, yeah, Cubs fans started um, tweeting out the lineup, some of the matches, the highlighted matches. Um, the January 17th show is going to feature Jushin Liger, Tanahashi and Mystico versus Okada, Gato, and Ultimo Guerrero. I'm, I'm not sure if Nakamura is going to be on this tour. That's going to be interesting. There's mm-hmm. that's another story that happened. Or, or just did you hear about it yesterday? No. WWE. Oh, I'm sorry. Might yes. have signed um, Nakamura, AJ Styles, AJ Styles and... Doc Gallows, and Carl Anderson. Yeah. You're like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you do you know all? all oh, of I them? do know do you know them. Yeah, actually, them? cool. Believe it or not, I know all of them. Yeah. Um, the other match is going to be. Um, I think it's Jay White and Dragon Lee versus Virus and Echicero, which should be really good. Yes. Um. We only Cubs Down only posted the couple of matches. I'll probably post it later on. Um, the one twenty show, January twentieth show is going to have Tanahashi and Dragon Lee versus Okada and Virus as the main event. Sweet, going to be awesome. I think. I think as I read these along, I think you guys can pretty much figure out who might end up getting that one year deal with New Japan, and <laughs> we could start crying and all you're together. You're excited about it, aren't you? Well, I'm. I'm. Di- I'm. I'm kind of excited just because he's really good and, you know, a year helps. But also kind of disappointed because I don't think, given what they did with Masquerade Dorada, they I don't, probably won't push him. They won't his... do as much with. I'm thinking Dragon Lee's going to be the one getting the, the, the one year contract if they do that. If I was going to pick somebody. Yeah, if they're going to do that. And I'm guessing that's who they're going to pick because he's really good. Um, the other match on January 20th is Guramaya and Okamura versus Panther. Oh, no, Gar- Guramaya and Okamura. And Panther versus Bobby Bobby Z Mm -hmm. in singles matches. The 122 show is going to feature Masker Dorada challenging Bushi for the CML welterweight title. Mm -hmm. Titan versus Barbara Carbonario. And a lot of people were asking about this when they were going to have a rematch. They're going to have it that day for the Mexican welterweight title. Uh, Juice Robinson will be teaming with Atlantis. I'm guessing in a trios match of some form. I haven't checked the lineups yet. Uh, 123 is featuring Dragon Lee versus Virus. If you missed that in May, that was a really good match. Basically, Dragon Lee's gonna probably win Wrestler of the Year by <laughs> by by this by the end of this tour. That would be bitching. Um, the Panther and Girl Maya are gonna defend the Arena Coliseo Tag Team Titles. They have to carry those ugly belts. I to, love it. Well, but it's worth it because it's at I least gonna de- against Bobby Z and Okumura and Titan and Dorada are gonna be a tag team. Cool. on that show and then the final show 120 on January 24th is going to have Mephisto versus Volador Jr. for the NWA welterweight title Mystico versus Ultimo Guerrero and Jushin Liger versus Virus ah, should ooh, be good sweet. Um, 
Lucha Block mentions Kamatachi is not listed on any of the cards, so that means he's going to be in hanging in Mexico, Mexico for at least another month. I'm guessing he might challenge Maximo for the oh. title. Although he's not a heavyweight, but who gives a crap? Yeah, yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the thing I, I hate about the people who get really worked up about the heavyweight title. I go, do you really want to see Maximo? I mean, Maximo's really good. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't you rather see Maximo against Kamatachi or Maximo versus the same guy like, over and oh, over absolutely. again? absolutely. Because he's a heavyweight. Yeah, so that, that should be a good card. You guys can... Oh, actually, Cubs fan already announced the entire lineup, so... But I'm guessing those are the main yeah, matches. Those are the, those are the main, main matches. I, um, I am like really up. You could get them on New Japan World, or if you wait, they'll probably be on some online some point. Yes, on. But Daily I mean, Motion definitely, yeah, <laughs> Daily <laughs> Mix. You, you search about, but I mean, yeah, you should look them up on. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed. What, but there's there's no Mister Neable this year. No, I'm shocked. I'm kind of curious if um, because um, UIPW is running a show on January 30th. Wonder if um, Bolador is going to be on that show. Oh. Remember, like the last time that um, they had. Um, yes, I remember that. I remember yeah. that. Are we going to that show? I know. hope so. January thirtieth. No plans yet. I must check it out. Yeah. I want to. I I uh, attend. Yeah, not yes. Yeah, Nakamura is on the card, so that's good news. Nakamura is on every single one of these. Um, let me see who Nakamura's what Nakamura is doing because I want to say like a white guy Nakamura. Um, Nakamura on the seventeenth is teaming with Mephisto versus Volador Jr. and Ta- Taguchi. On the nineteenth, that was the other card that I didn't mention. Um, he is teaming with. He's in the main event. Bunch of dudes. Um, I'm just gonna look through it because I don't really care about all the other <laughs> matches. I saw one. Oh, on the twenty third, Nakamura teams up with Bob Barbaro Carbonario. Oh, will form the greatest tag team. Since Hechicero and Barbara Carvernario. Hell yeah. That should be good. Oh, man. I'm going to miss Nakamura in, in just for these tours. Because <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, I mean, that's really what I enjoy most about him when he does lucha. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's what we can we have looking to look Very forward cool. to. Well, we got 2016 on the horizon. Yeah. And let's remind everybody, luchaworld.com. Yeah, we the place to go. Yeah, did a write up on the top ten stories of 2015. So if anybody wanted to know more about the what happened in 2015, they could read it there. We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and if you have anything to say, you can write me, Vandal the Love Handle, at Liger L Y G E R at A O L dot com or Facebook or Twitter, Vandal Drummond. Do not write Fredo whatever you do. I'll, I'll be not. I'll, I'll be. I'll, I'll. I'll read Kurt's. I'll read your email before Kurt decides to read it out loud and on the podcast. But, he'll, but I'll probably still yell about it. He'll read it in a rudo voice. <laughs> yes. We'll all read them in a technical voice, yes. a very friendly voice. Word. So, what yes. did you think about Danny Danny Costa's winning the um, Toscano's hair? That's on. That that's one of the matches you could actually. I try watch. to figure how he. You, I, I I try to figure out how he could win even a worked match. <laughs> I you know. There's a lot of Casas family. You know, I, I saw. Okay, I, I saw a match recently with Canelo Casas. Really bad. You know what? It wouldn't. Bother. You know, it's bad when he he can't do his finisher, and his finisher is like some sort of side slam. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing I thought, it wouldn't bug me so much if his last name wasn't Casas. Yeah. I say, okay, he's getting he by. But the other three guys in the tag team, probably less experienced than him, moved a lot more fluidly. Was this a Puebla match or just something else? It was, I think... You haven't watched any of the Puebla shows, right? No, I haven't. Yeah. Do I want to... I'm like, I'm like, I'm like you're not missing much. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, in fact, I heard everybody sound surprised because there was one show recently that I guess was actually pretty good, like in the last couple of weeks, where it was actually like, oh, hey, this wasn't too bad. Yeah, that's about it. There I was... dig the arena, though. Yeah, it's actually been packed the last couple of shows, so that's maybe it's the Hollywood holidays and all that, but it's like, I'm surprised. Look. Yeah, Mexico's like the last of the place that has traditional holiday yeah. shows. Yeah, the, the Puebla pop. shows have been surprisingly packed lately. Um, the They had a really short main event this past week, so... They, they just don't have a really good plan of how they... They're, like, you could have, like, an opening match that goes 20, 30 minutes, and it's like, dude, why are these guys still going? Now let, let's see. If, if, if the crowds are packed, let's see. Maybe those are the times when Mihei is there. It's Mihei. That's it's all about Mihei and Sakurai yes. Saperico. It's all about Mihei. Yeah. It's all about Mihei, Sakurai hey. Saperico, and Kei Monito. <laughs> 
Well, so much to look forward to. Thank you for listening, folks. And we will be back in two, three month, weeks. Four. We'll be back soon. <laughs> we'll be back very soon. Thank you, as always, for listening. And uh, have a totally rockin' new year. Take care.